Jesus, upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever into the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of the blessed month of Amshir. And if you were kind of following along with the different themes of the month, um, a couple of months ago, um, we celebrated the feast of the, the nativity, um, <clears throat> as, as you know. And the theme have to, had to do with the incarnation, the coming of the Lord. And then last month, we um, celebrated the feast of the Epiphany, and so we remember the the, the theme of, of baptism, which will actually recur again later on during the Great Lent. And so this month, um, the the focus is primarily the communion or the bread of life. And the chapter that we read from, I said before, anyone remember the Gospel according to Saint John, chapter six. So the, the first three weeks, um, we read from, <clears throat> or the first three Sundays, we read from um, this chapter, not necessarily in chronological order, um, but today we, we see, um, we see the, the, the search for the Lord and for the, the bread, um, and the Lord rebukes them for seeking the, the worldly bread, bread instead of the heavenly bread. Um, <clears throat> and last night actually was a continuation uh, or today is a continuation of last night's gospel where the Lord walks on water um, and meets his disciples uh, along the path uh, in the sea after performing the miracle of feeding the, the, the multitudes with the five loaves and two fish, which we read next Sunday. <clears throat> and then the, the third Sunday, he speaks more uh, clearly about him being the bread of life. <clears throat> so, um, and some years we were not able to read all of those uh, three, God willing, this year we will because the Great Lent comes a little bit later um, in, in the year. So so um, we're able to read from all three and actually all four of um, these Sunday Gospels. <clears throat> but today we'll just focus a little bit on the last two verses that the, that the Lord uh, gave. Um, <clears throat> uh, after they find the Lord Jesus. So, so remember, he, he performs the miracle. He, he walks uh, along the sea, um, across the shore from where all the people and even the disciples left the Lord. And he spent the night there in, in, in prayer. And at the end of the night, he comes, uh, he crosses the sea. So then the people see him on the other side and are confused because they're searching for him, maybe for the wrong reasons, as he declares. And then um, he, he uh, rebukes them <clears throat> softly. Um, saying, most assuredly, I say to you, seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. <clears throat> and uh, St. Augustine um, kind of reflects on this, uh, warning us to make sure we don't fall into the same trap. He says, um, he paraphrases the Lord saying, um, you seek me because of the flesh, not because of the spirit. So we have to ask ourselves, why do I seek God? Um, why do I come to the church? Right? These are basic questions, but sometimes we need to reevaluate our intentions and our priorities and our goals. Uh, some people might have physical or materialistic reasons for coming uh, to the church or going to God. Uh, it's a safe place for the kids. Okay, that, that's nice, but that's not the reason why we come, right? Or my, my, my parents made me come. That's why I'm here. That's, that's, or they forced me to pray. Of course, our parents are supposed to guide and direct us. Um, but the minute you have a choice, then you're not coming to the Lord for, for the, the proper, or at all, not for even for the wrong reasons. Sometimes the reasons are social. Um, it's where I meant meet my friends or socialize, or I need to, to find this or to get this. Sometimes it's educational, which is good. Um, but, but we don't come to church just because of Sunday school, right? Um, <clears throat> so uh, sometimes the reasons are emotional. I need to see God because he gives me peace or be, I need to pray to him so he can solve my problems. That's good, but it's not the best. Sometimes we treat God improperly, kind of like a vending machine, right? Um, we put in the money, we click the button, figure out what I want, and I will get what I receive. God does not always and usually doesn't work that way. Um, and then what happens if you don't get what you want or if you don't get anything at all? What do you do to the vending machine? <laughs> you, 
you, you beat it up, right? Do we do that with God? Um, I put in my time, I put in my prayers, I did my fasting. God didn't give me what, what I want. Forget this. Um, forget him. Right? Of course, this is an extreme way of dealing with God, but uh, or sometimes we're bitter inside. Um, or we're disappointed and, and we hold a grudge against God because he doesn't give us what, what we ask for. Um, and we even sometimes try to use his words against him in scripture. You said, ask and receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be added unto you. Um, but he also said, seek first the kingdom of, of heaven and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, <clears throat> so we have to be okay with, with God's will not ours. Sometimes we pray um, to, to, in the assumption that God's will, um, will, God will submit his will to ours. But that's not what prayer is about. Prayer is the opposite. We don't pray that God aligns his will with ours, but that our will may be aligned with his. That's why we always end um, with the Lord's Prayer, um, focusing on the, the phrase, let your will be done. Um, <clears throat> and so all of the, the reasons that we come to God may be good, but the best reason is for him and for salvation and for the food that endures to everlasting life and the sacrament of, of the Eucharist, especially everything that we do in the church revolves around the mystery of the Eucharist <clears throat> and, and the bread of life, which, which gives us salvation, remission of sins and eternal life. And so that's why the last verse here, um, it, the Lord says, uh, verse 27, um, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, um, <clears throat> which the Son of Man will give you because the God the Father has set his seal on him. Um, so here God is saying, I know you're working hard in your daily life, but are you working hard for your spiritual life? Right? Um, we labor often, for the physical, but how about the spiritual? Um, <clears throat> not to add more burden, but actually when we labor for the spiritual, the physical labor seems even um, a breeze. It seems easier. It seems more joyful. And we're not stuck um, in in the, 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 the physical or the worldly mentality. Um, and so that's one of the blessings that uh, we receive from transforming our focus from the the earthly to the heavenly um, from the temporal to the eternal um, and so um, that's why we need to labor we need we need to work hard um, and with every labor um, even even the liturgy do you remember the de definition or the translation of the word liturgy what does it mean the work of the people Right? It's work. It's hard work. Um, and the harder we work, the, the more we spiritual benefit we get, the more peace, love, joy um, we, we receive. <clears throat> not, that's not the goal, as the, again we, we mentioned. The goal is Christ. Um, but when we have him, we don't need anything else. And so how do I labor? How do I labor for the, the, the spiritual things? Um, <clears throat> well, the first thing, is that we need to prepare, we need to prep, right? And, and these four letters of prep kind of will um, help us remind us what needs to be done. When we look at the liturgical services and how the church teaches us to prepare for meeting the Lord and abiding in him and taking his holy body and precious blood into us, then um, we apply these same four um, guidelines um, to receive anything as spiritual from him. <clears throat> so the first one has to do with prayer and praise. So we, we prepare for the liturgy with prayer um, and with praises, um, whether from the, the, the book of hours, the holy Ekbeya, the raising of incense in the morning, but also in the evening before, the midnight praises, um, the morning doxology. The, these prayers and praises are in preparation for meeting God and becoming um, uh, like him, right? So when we imitate the Lord and the saints in this way, um, there's a transformation that happens in us before even we get to see him. Um, and so we can't overlook uh, these important 
um, preparation uh, that the Lord um, or that the church has prepared for us. And the more we do it, the more we find benefit from from communion. Some people will come to them and say, I didn't feel it today. Okay, maybe it's because you didn't prepare enough yourself and your heart. Uh, for, it's kind of like saying, oh, we're going to meet so and this person today. And you don't know the person. You've never met them. You've never even heard about them. So, of course, you're not really going to pay attention when you're meeting uh, or them for the first time. But if you know them well, or if you've um, read what they said or heard what they spoke of, um, and people um, spoke very highly of them, or you spoke to them on the phone before you arrived, then the relationship is different. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first step, is that we pre prepare with prayer and praise. The second one is repentance and re reconciliation. And not to be negative, but when we examine ourselves and um, and recognize how far we we are from where we need to be um, from from our Savior, then um, we know that we realize there's work to be done. And so when we come to do the spiritual work, we're more motivated to do it. Um, like when St. Paul says to the Corinthians about preparing for the communion, he says, therefore, who, whoever eats the br this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. He says, but let a person or let a man examine himself. Right? So each one of us has to examine ourselves, um, uh, myself especially, before we partake of the mysteries, no matter how many times um, we, we uh, partake. Um, <clears throat> and so he says, so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup, for he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. So not to scare um, or, or, or warn, but just to, for us to be more vigilant. Um, in the way we prepare ourselves before taking the holy mysteries. Um, and then the second part of the art is the reconciliation. As, as, Saint, um, as the Lord says, actually, in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, if you bring your gift to the altar and there, remember that you have something against your brother or your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, go your way, first be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Right. So the the dealings that we have with others um, need to be corrected before we come to God and say, Lord, have mercy, right? We ask for our brother or sister, have mercy on me, forgive me, right? Um, try to be reconciled with them before you ask reconciliation from God. Um, and that's why we greet one another with a holy kiss before the, the, the covering of the altar is lift, lifted and before we enter into the Eucharist. Um, uh, Eucharistic part of the liturgy or the liturgy of the faithful. <clears throat> so again, prayer and praise, repentance and reconciliation, and then education and, and no eating, right? So the, the educational part means um, <clears throat> I need to eat my spiritual food um, and I need to grow and I need to learn about even the, the liturgical service itself. The more I learn about it and why we're saying these words or where these prayers are coming from or what is the purpose of what my mental state should be, my spiritual state should be at this part of the prayer, then the prayer is more meaningful to me and I, I'm able to enter into the spirit of, of, of the prayer itself. <clears throat> if I don't know anything about um, the prayers or I don't understand what is being um, said, even if it's in English, then, then it I don't have an opportunity for the words to take root in, in my heart. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and then there has to be an absence, right? There has to be uh, preparing by saying, I'm not going to be filled with anything until I'm filled with you. Um, and so this is, this is a physical preparation, but it's for a spiritual purpose. And, and the more preparation, again, we have, the more spiritual benefit we receive. And so the, the last point is the, the practice, 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 right? Um, we practice how to pray by praying, right, at home. Um, we, we learn by, like what we said, studying and educating ourselves and coming to, to liturgy because every time we don't benefit, we, we say, okay, I need to work harder on this point. I need to come um, uh, earlier or I need to pay attention more, I need to sit up in the front. Whatever it might be, we we train ourselves by learning from our mistakes and, and growing. That way, um, every liturgy becomes a new experience and a new uh, 
test or a new opportunity to see and meet with our beloved Savior. <clears throat> um, and so these are uh, the, the four uh, characteristics of prepping ourselves or preparing for um, meeting the Lord and partaking of his uh, divine uh, body and precious blood. <clears throat> the last point we'll uh, talk about is um, reminding us of the example of St. Paul today in, in the uh, Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> you know, after his conversion, when he saw, saw the Lord, uh, right? And he, he said, um, uh, the Lord told him, you are kicking against the goats, right? What happened to him physically? He was blinded, right? Um, and, it, it, and it says... Uh, in, in the passage of today, Acts chapter 9, it says, The Lord said to him, Arise and go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. So only St. Paul heard uh, the voice of the Lord. And he rose from the ground. When his eyes were open, he saw no one. So this is the idea here, is we want to, to as St. Paul says in another place to the Corinthians, he says, We do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Right? So when, when he opened his eyes, he was blind. Right? And they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he prepared with the same ways that we, we just spoke of. He did not eat for, or drink for three days in preparation for um, after seeing God. A glimpse of him, he said, I want to see the Lord even more. Um, and he was preparing actually for his, his baptism here. <clears throat> um, and so I think all of us need to put as a goal, a spiritual goal, to seek the heavenly things more, to open our eyes to the heavenly things and shut our eyes more to the worldly things. Um, and uh, what are the unseen things? God, heaven, the spirit, the angels, right? Um, no, uh, for example, and that's probably one reason why we don't have the, the, most of us don't have the opportunity to see God in the flesh, right? No one has seen God at, at any time, um, as the scripture says. Yet we feel his presence in the church, in our daily life, in the sacraments, in, in, in our prayer. When two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them, right? We focus on what we don't see, um, and uh, as His Holiness Pope Shenouda III of blessed memory uh, used, uh, used to say, he said, live in the world, but don't let the world live in you, right? Um, <clears throat> he says, we may be con uh, conducting our life outwardly in this world, but we don't allow the, the issues of the world to go into the depth of our, our thoughts and our emotions and, and, and our uh, concerns, right? Because our concerns and our the depth of our emotions and thoughts should be in the heavenly things. And so that's how we kind of close our eyes or blind ourselves to, to the worries of the world, even though we um, do our work in the world. But our inner work ne needs to be more than the outer. <clears throat> As St. Augustine said, I sat on top of the world when I came to fear nothing and desire nothing but you. Speaking to the Lord, of course. So when we have this ability or when we grow in this ability, to seek the heavenly things um, more than the worldly things, then our desire is only God. And yes, troubles will come and go, but it doesn't affect the depth of our heart because our faith is is attached to our, our Redeemer. <clears throat> um, and so, um, and I mean, look look at all the the people even in Scripture, like from from Eve, from the very beginning. What what was the beginning of her downfall? Just because she ate, but what did she do before she ate? It says in, uh, in, in Genesis 3, 6, When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasure, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. Right? Of course, it was after the, the temptation, the discussion with, with the serpent. Um, but... She was setting her eyes on, on the physical. She was already in paradise. Um, but she took her eyes off of what was important. Um, of course, 
the, that doesn't happen nowadays in paradise. And here we're, we're, the scripture is speaking of um, what happened back then, you know. Um, but once we do get to paradise, there is no possibility to, to be tempted or to lose our, our salvation. <clears throat> um, so uh, after we prep ourselves and keep our eyes on the Lord and the heavenly things, then we're able, as St. John Chrysostom says, after eating the spiritual food, the, the mysteries, um, the Holy Communion, let us turn into lions, which, which frighten the devils. Sometimes we think of ourselves as the weak. Yes, we are, we are weak in the flesh, but when God is with us and inside of us, he says, let us turn into lions which, which frighten the devil. The devil should be afraid of us, uh, not the other way around. Um, <clears throat> he said, inflamed with the fire of love. Um, so, so this is the goal. This is the purpose of why we partake of the, the communion. But again, it's primarily to be with the Lord, to be with the Savior, to prepare ourselves for eternal life, um, not to solve the problems of the world, but to solve the problem of sin. Um, and, and to be attached with our beloved one. <clears throat> May the Lord give us these blessings of, of the, the, the Eucharistic life and put it more as a priority so that um, we, we seek or we see through the worldly things um, and, and search for, for the heavenly. Glory be to him now and forever into the age of